did you end up in this show? And what do you love <laughs> best about it? Um, well, the technical version is that, you know, producers and directors will just contact your agents and say, oh, we're interested in seeing this person for this, that, or the third. And so I just went in traditionally to audition for it. And, um, but that's just the technical side. I believe, you know, everything's a part of a bigger picture and part of the bigger, your bigger destiny. And it's all based on, you know, kind of like a spiritual foundation um, of what, you know, your life is meant to be. Mm -hmm. And I was in Williamstown and thinking that I wasn't going to be working in the fall. And um, this audition came in. We had callbacks and started rehearsal within two weeks, which is sometimes unheard of to just go to within the Broadway level. Yeah. Sometimes, we're like, when you're going to Broadway, like, I have friends who uh, found out in July that they were doing Les Mis, uh -huh. which isn't happening <laughs> until, like, January is when rehearsals start. So sometimes there's six months before you're going to Broadway. Six months? Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes you know your show's going to Broadway in six months. Okay. But you have to do something within those six months. You still have to work, right? Right, right, right. This all happened within two weeks. Okay. So it's just one of those, like... Oh, okay. The Lord said this is what I'm supposed to do. That's <laughs> so. No, no, that's okay. I, I've been like. Do you remember what you were in the middle of doing when you got the call, like the uh, approval for the role? Um. Honestly, no. <laughs> because, you know, it's just my 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 main life is as a mom. So I'm always running around and take my son to school first thing in the morning. You know, I have this Cinderella thing. I get up at 6.30, take my son to school. I come home. Then I try to, like, get myself together, maybe take a nap. And then I go do this show at night, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm on stage, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not tired. <laughs> I haven't been up all day, you know. And then I run home and try to, like, you know, ease myself back to sleep and get up at 6.30. So um, I don't remember what I did yesterday. <laughs> so you said that you uh, spent some time in Harlem at the end time. Yeah. Uh -huh. did, your, did your grandmother also sing? Do you come from a singing family? My grandmother um, sang in church and played the organ and the piano, and she had this really big tenor voice <laughs> that <laughs> you always knew when she, you could always hear her voice out of the choir. It's really big. She was like the only woman in the tenor section. So I think that's where I got, I call myself the lady, the lady um, baritone. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where I got my low voice from. But um, it was my great grandmother who moved to Harlem. Thank you. Who moved to Harlem when she was younger. And um, she didn't sing. She like hung out at a cotton club and party. But I spent a lot of time with her in Harlem. Um, she lived in Lenox Terrace. Oh, snap. Okay. And I went to Harlem School of the Arts and Dance Theater of Harlem when I was younger. Wow. So, um, and we lived right across the bridge in New Jersey, so I was always in Harlem yeah, when I was yeah, a kid. You sure was. Yeah, my entire childhood, um, the weekends, and then like a few days a week as a, when I got older mm -hmm. and started taking more and more dance classes, I was always in Harlem. Tell me your favorite restaurant that it was still there or not, but your favorite place to like go and have that meal. You know the meal I'm talking about. That was my great grandmother's house right there in Lenox Terrace, man. That was. You know, just that home cooked oh, meal man. that she would make. She made, I mean, like she made collard greens like every other day. Stop that was just like I grew up on soul food. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so we didn't really we didn't really go out to eat because you know grandma she was oh great grandma was always cooking. She was always cooking in the house. But uh, now, what's the best compliment you've had um, from anybody on this show? This guy said to me the other day that my voice bathed him in the moment or something. I forget, like, it was, but it was the way that he phrased it. Um, and that to me is always a bigger compliment than, like, um, talking about, like, vocal acrobatics or how someone looks or something like that because what you what you always want to do is like make someone feel something mm -hmm. that's always my goal when I go on stage mm -hmm. and I try to do that as naturally as possible without like you know contriving it to I really want to make you feel this like mm -hmm. you, that that's just too much work I'm, <laughs> you, I'm very surprised by your age because when 
when when you sang for me, and I felt like you sang for me, I really felt the blues. I I just wanted to go up and say, girl, <laughs> sing it to me, right? I don't even know what happened. <laughs> Thank so you. you're welcome. So the age was kind of a, it took me back a little bit. What is the most demanding thing about performing on stage? The absolute focus and concentration that you have to have every single second. You, you, it doesn't matter what has happened in the day. It doesn't matter what has to happen after the show, like if you have somewhere to be or if you have something important to do the next day. It does not matter. You have to be present in every single moment, mm -hmm. not just so that you can remember your lines and remember your staging, but um, especially in a show like this where we have kind of like uh, tricky lighting, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> uh, with darkness over here or mm -hmm. side lighting over here. And you have, you know, you have carpet and then you have steps and then mm -hmm. you have other people on stage in close proximity sometimes. You just have to be in the moment and concentrate because one one move, like when we're doing move with the spirit, mm -hmm. with those tambourines, mm -hmm. it's like one false move and everybody goes down like dominoes, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. that to me is the most demanding thing to have, uh, to be, present in the moment, mm -hmm. every single moment. Uh, that's very well said. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and what, what, what advice would you give to a young, I spent a lot of time at HSA, mm -hmm. it's right around the corner for me and I just go because those kids just make me smile. Uh. <laughs> what, what, what advice would you give to a young performer, like real advice, not like, oh, this is what the teacher is called, like, look, this is what you really need to know to get over here, and mm -hmm. more importantly, to stay over here. Mm -hmm. I would say the, the first thing that you have to do is really make sure that this is what you want to do, mm -hmm. and not, you, not because you want to do it because maybe you want to make a lot of money, because mm -hmm. sometimes you're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, also not because... Um, you just think it's cool or interesting or because you want to be famous because if you're doing it for those reasons, you will often feel unfulfilled. I see. Because there are going to be times when you're not making a lot of money on a project or times when no one knows your name. And, mm -hmm. You know, you can't, you can't expect to walk out the stage door and have masses of people there like, mm -hmm. I love you. <laughs> like if, 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 if you need it for the adoration, mm -hmm. then there's something else that you really need and not, you know, this isn't really that. Because I find that the people who really, really want to do this, they stick with it, they stay in it. Mm -hmm. when, like a marriage, when times are hard, mm -hmm. <laughs> when you feel like the business is cheating on you and somebody else, you know, you still stay in it. Mm -hmm. And um, dedicate your life to it, really make sure that it's what you wanna do. And then train, like don't just try to jump into it. Like really, um, really try to train professionally. Like I trained at Harlem School of the Arts and also I went to um, Tisch, uh, NYU. And you just really have to dedicate yourself to learning your craft, um, taking speech, taking voice. Um, I have a speech thing that I always have to work on, you know, like when it's just me talking, I don't really care. But if I go on stage and I'm playing like a super articulate person, I have to work on, you know, the way that I talk, you mm -hmm. know, you have to really, like perfect all the little details right. of, of the craft and that's being able to play different people and take on different roles. Oh, and, music. and so you should try I write songs. You write songs. Yeah. You're so only in a musical. I've been <laughs> I've been <laughs> writing songs since I was a teenager. Stop it. Yeah. What kind of songs? What kind of songs? Um they are soul jazz based. Soul jazz based. Yeah. Okay. I'm ignorant. <laughs> um, well, jazz has always been a influence of mine since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. My mom made me listen to jazz, and I hated it when I was little. So I was like, oh, there's no words. <laughs> <laughs> but um, then I grew to love it, like like everything your parents make you do. And Amen. then like you resent that you start to like it. And you're like, oh, they were right. Damn it. Um, and so the music that I write has... Uh, jazz in mind in right. certain ways but the reason I say it's jazz soul based is because I also grew up on a lot of soul music mm -hmm. and um, so there's a soul sensibility in some of the the rhythms mm -hmm. there's a jazz sensibility in some of the instrumentation mm -hmm. um, like I have a single 
that it's it's on YouTube, it's on iTunes and stuff like that. But it's, it's a couple years old now, called Days Are Like Dreams that I wrote. That's a pretty title. Uh, Days are like dreams. Days are like dreams. That's nice. Yeah, thank you. It's on yeah. YouTube, and it has like a soul jazz. You'll you'll get it if if you listen to that, then you'll get exactly what you'll be like. Are oh, we allowed to use it for? Do we want to touch your clips for that? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A, it's out there on, on YouTube <laughs> for the for the world to see. Little I got below little. two thousand views. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, oh, sorry. I, I was <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Sorry. So, <laughs> dreaming out loud. Yes. And an agreement. Uh, name the three directors that you aspire to work with in theater, I mean, in, in film or television and why. Okay. Spike Lee. Spike, okay. Again. Again. <laughs> I've worked with Spike um, three times now. And it's because when, when he hires an actor, he already knows, he already has full confidence in what that actor can do. Mm -hmm. And he really loves... Um, what actors bring, their individuality. Yeah, he does. And he loves theater actors. He likes that kind of background and training that they come from. Nice. And I just like working with Spike because he just says, you already know what you're doing, just do your thing. Um, and he'll always be a favorite of mine. So continuing to work with Spike Lee. Um, the Coen brothers, because they're just out there. But in that way that I was in high school, mm -hmm. Um, like when I was in Passing Strange, we coined this phrase alter Negro because that's what we all were in high school, you know? We were the, we listened to Pearl Jam and mm -hmm. we were, <laughs> we were the outcasts in our African-American communities for the most part. So um, the Coen brothers, they kind of like fit that whole alter Negro alternative kind of, um, kind of part of my personality. In, in their kind of like alternative filmmaking in a way, oh, yeah. you know? And I just I just love the way that they pull a story together that's kind of like crazy. I'm like, what's happening? I wasn't expecting that and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm gonna say Jerry Bruckheimer, because it's just all, all the like most amazing TV shows that I see, his name is attached and I'm like, I need to meet this man. He likes people of color. Well, well, then we'll get along good because I'm of color. You are. You are definitely of color. <laughs> yeah. I think his director of marketing is an African American woman, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Yeah, he likes people of color. He's a, he's a good guy. I haven't worked with him yet, but I have friends who have. He's a, he's a loyal TV guy. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Very so cool. I'll say those three. <laughs> there are more. Shonda Rhimes, call me. <laughs> you, can you can do three more for television. Absolutely. She's a smart, she's a smart woman. She's just incredible. She's so inspiring, you know? She just, Grey's Anatomy, just a hit. Mm -hmm. And then I remember her talking about Scandal, like, oh, we're gonna do this thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, making it sound very kind of casual, like, oh, yeah, we'll create this new TV show. Biggest hit on television. Mm -hmm. Scandal is like one of those shows, it reminds me of watching TV in the 80s when you had to be home at a certain time to see it because there's no VCR, there's no TiVo, right? You have to see it when it's coming on. And in the age of social, social media, that's how scandal is. If you don't see it at 10 o'clock on Thursday, then by 11.15, somebody's gonna be talking about what happened. <laughs> so you ha it's, like, it's like, you know, you have to see it before you talk to anyone, before you do anything else. Yeah, we're so there has not been social a, media. We're <laughs> <up for> <laughs> there has not been a TV show like that that I can think of in a very long time. I mean, you know, sometimes people talk about what happened on certain TV shows, mm -hmm. but not like Scandal, man. Mm -hmm. And people get mad over it. Right, you, you know, the, the I was in the beauty salon and people started talking about what happened on Scandal the night before. And they're like, uh-uh, no, don't, I ain't see it yet. Don't, like, like friendships will end if you tell me what happened on Scandal before I get a chance to see it. That's kind of how this office operates. Yeah, it's true. Like, when, when has that happened? That hasn't happened since the 80s. So oh, you go, okay. Shonda Rhimes. Okay, we're coming now. You go, girl. Oh, come on, come on. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> I think you should be in a comedy. I want to really Honestly, badly. No, you are very funny. I'd rather make people laugh than cry. Well, yeah. But, you know, your singing does that. Well, thank you. You, you smile from the inside out like that. Thank so, you. um, you're welcome. Uh, closing up, 
figure out what is your New Year's resolution? Um, what is your favorite show on Broadway that you're not in but you love to go to? <laughs> and uh, yeah, those are the last two questions. Um, New Year's resolution. It's usually the same thing. Stop being candy. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, I, I just, you know, I just always, I, I don't really believe in New Year's resolutions, but I do take a moment before the next year starts to just kind of reflect on everything that happens. Mm -hmm. And I just try to start the new year um, with, as my, my home pastor in Augusta, Georgia would say, an attitude of gratitude Amen. for everything that's happened and just try to keep striving just always try to be better. Like every mom wants to be a better mom. It doesn't mean she can bake cookies every day and she's still like, I can be a better mom. Um, <laughs> so just to always be a, you know, always work on being a better mom and um, just staying focused and, and continuing to break down what are very real barriers in the industry and, you know, mm -hmm. keep striving and all that good stuff. And your favorite uh, show on Broadway, what? You know, <laughs> there's a show that I saw 10 years ago that just like, I swear when I think about uh, creating pictures on stage, I just always think that this show is just, just set the bar so high and a lot of shows have, have, haven't touched it at all, and that's The Lion King. Oh, snap, okay. This is one of the most visually stunning things I've ever seen. Like, I remember seeing it 10 years ago. Yeah. Just, just how creative um, the costumes are mm -hmm. with puppetry mm -hmm. and the faces painted, but then still a mask, mm -hmm. and I just remember like, um, you know, lots of actors running and then costumes billowing and just, just all the pictures, mm -hmm. besides the stunning talent and you know the the music and things like that so there's a reason why it's been open for like nine to five years nine to five. that it was, was the, amazing the amazing last, show the last uh gift i gave my mother before she passed away and she oh, wow. talked about it endlessly to everyone every time they called and she performed sections of it <laughs> every time she called. So it was, and I, every time I walked out, I haven't seen it yet because I, I emotionally, I, I can't go into oh, it. Wow. it. It touched her and she just performed it till it's like she couldn't do it anymore. It was also sentimental for me because um, I took my son to see it. He was two years old. Aww. And my whole family went and I was like, Aww. I don't know if he's gonna get it. He's two. <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna sit through it. So he's sitting next to me and the whole time he's like this. We were in the mezzanine, so we're looking down. And he's like, and I would look over and it was just like, wow. And I was like, is anything going in? Oh, I don't know wow. if anything's going in. Uh -huh. he's just, you know what I mean? So he says nothing the whole time. We leave the theater and on the way home, he's like, mommy, then, so the lion came out, and then Simba and Nala, and then they went over here, oh. and he told me the whole story. And then when we got oh. home, he's telling me the story. He wakes up the next day, he's telling me the story. And he's going on and on and on. And he's like, I want to hear the songs. I want to hear the songs. Oh, and I was like, well, you know, it's a live show, so it's over. You know, you just have to remember the songs. He goes, no, I want the soundtrack. He's two years old. He wants the soundtrack. Oh, I love the soundtrack. <laughs> so I had to go buy the soundtrack. And then, so I got him the soundtrack. And then I'm like, is there a particular song you want to hear? Which song did you like? He goes, I want to hear the whole thing. And that boy listened to the Lion King soundtrack, start to finish, every day for months. And he was two. He was two years old. Is and it safe to say you have a Broadway baby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> God help me. Does he aspire to perform? Aspire to perform? He's in the school play now. Well, he's, he's rehearsing to do the school play. But, you know, up until Aww. now, he's wanted to be a scientist. I'm like, please, please. Aww. It's so hard. No, I, he can he can do whatever he wants, but it, I mean it'd be my fault. What, I, you doing the Lion King? And, and I took him here, and I took <laughs> him to see like all these shows. I've taken him to a night with Janis Joplin. So what did he think you know. when he saw Janis? Oh, he just thinks I'm weird. He's just like, ah, oh, you're always putting on costumes. It's so weird. But then secretly, I think he's like, it's kind of cool too. Oh, 
You I know. have to be weird. I'm his mother. I can't you be cool. Know, you know, you know he's cool. <laughs> it's like, my mom does that on stage. What's up? You know, inside he's like walking with flowers. I hope. I know. And then at the Tony Awards, we were sitting next to Julie Tame. Oh, so. snap. And he's sitting next to me, and Julie Tame was right there. Oh, snap. And I was like, this bitch wants my son love the Lion King. I'm, like, you. like how, how many people say <laughs> my kid loved the Lion King? Yeah, Tamer. I'm won. sure many. But you, Many your say story that is even more incredible because he didn't say anything until later, and he told you the whole thing at two. That's true. So visually, and this was years later. Yeah, so. that's that's. So that was kind of like a you know full circle moment, <laughs> sitting next to her with my son, <laughs> and we're both at the Tonys. And Lion King opened the Tony Awards that year that I was nominated, so that was cool. Do you think? Well, I don't care about the awards or stuff, but I'll see you. I don't I'll see you soon. I I'll, I'll I'll see you in, in the summer again, but hopefully I'll talk to you again. Oh, me? But there's no, there's no. No, I see. Anyway. Yeah, we don't care. We already spoke the word about the film. But Mary Bridget Davies, who plays Janice, absolutely. That's a scary Her voice is just stupid. It's, I, Sometimes I just look at her and I go, your voice is stupid. She just laughs. <laughs> she laughs at me. But it is just crazy. I listen to Janet every morning on my, it's like my wake up uh, music. And I was telling her, I was like, she out Janice Cannon. I mean, I feel it's terrible saying that, but she's so good. No, her voice is just insane. And her movements, too. We all, we all agree that, like, she's just she touched by that. God. Yeah, she gets channeled. To be able to do that. Yeah. It's just crazy. The levels of the up and down. It is just crazy. Well, you're crazy, too, though. You're not well. Well, please. You're welcome. So he's going <laughs> to follow you. To we're gonna wrap up. Yeah, we head over to the theater. Okay. Um, do a quick photo. I thought it would be best if we have a stage in the background and uh, have you in front of the orchestra and kind of have everything. Do that. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I'm staying in the house. Works. And then uh, I think that should work. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah Paul. Paul Just is a me. very good photographer, but he's particularly good with people of color. Oh, good. Yeah. Because yeah, you know sometimes we come talking. out looking Cheers. gray. Yeah. You are. Sometimes we come out looking gray. The lighting ain't right. I can't imagine you having a bad hair day. I don't know. <laughs>